Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born as a Super Saiyan 4. I'd like to give a shout out to... Uh, wait, which one is... Ah, oh, fuck it. Uzaki-chan, who made this beautifully composed artwork. If you'd like to contribute some your own artwork, not read colors and shit like that, I'm active on Instagram so you can send me there, or ping me in Kakarot server along with your work. And before I start, I'd like to mention that I created a Discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video, so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I post either Minecraft or OSU stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part, we discussed the events that happened during the peaceful time after Buu Saga. Trunks found a girlfriend named Videl, who continued to into college and they're hitting it off. Videl mentioned the Tenkaichi Budokai to Trunks and he agrees to go. The kids who participated back then also want to join, as well as Boma and Trunks himself. He trained Videl pretty hard in more ways than one. Once Videl buffed up quite a bit, they wait for the upcoming tournament. On the tournament, the fights go as followed. Videl and Piccolo in which Piccolo won, then Mr. Satan and Trunks, the obvious winner being Trunks, Goten and Boma, and Goten is the winner due to Boma losing her artificial S-cells, and Ashlot and Chi Chi then enter and Chi Chi gets easily dominated by Ashlot. Going to semi-finals, we have Piccolo and Trunks, and Trunks dominates to avenge and impress Videl. Then Goten and Ashala enter and Goten wins by going above Super Saiyan, going into Super Saiyan Grade 2. The finals go as followed. Trunks and Goten fight and at first they seem equal and they pretty much kept that composure until the very end where they tire out and with one last push knock each other out. Vegeta was kinda embarrassed and Kakarot went to compliment his son to himself and Vegeta. Both of them promising they'll train them much better for the upcoming future. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. It's been another couple of years, Trunks and Videl finally settle in and with the help of Boma and Hercule, they get a neat place too. Their marriage is coming soon and they just can't wait, but it might have to be postponed as the destroyer named Beerus awoken from his 38 year sleep. Beerus is asking for a super saiyan god of course, and Whis tells him how there is an infestation of saiyans on planet Mars and a small group on earth. Beerus is triggered by the word of infestation and is written out how Frieza didn't fulfill his promise. Covered by Whis how there was a very unique Saiyan child who killed him many years ago, going by the title of King Vegeta the Fourth. Beerus is getting interested in the concept of the Super Saiyan God and so he asked Whis to take him to Mars first. Whis does so but makes a few quick stops. First he stops at the Kaioshin's planet after devouring a few planets on the way. He asks about the Super Saiyan God and of course, the two Kais don't know shit about the so-called Super Saiyan God, so Beerus and his attendant depart on their merry way again. Next up is Kaiosama, and after destroying a few more planets, they arrive on his little planet, asking for the, you guessed it, the Super Saiyan God. No one knows of the legend and tells about it in as much detail as possible. Beerus then says that there are a few Saiyans on Mars and Earth, and that he's gonna pay them a visit. King Kai instantly regrets saying that to the destroyer and he wants to protect them after all they have done to save and protect the universe. Beerus then devours a few more planets cause he didn't like the food and then heads to Mars. When he arrived he saw a whole lot of Saiyans and that made him vomit of course. He knew that Saiyans here weren't as powerful compared to what he dreamt of so he went to see if they can do something against him. He started key blasting shit all around him, alerting quite a handful of Saiyans actually. Back on Earth, Vegeta sends the distress and went to see what's going on. He instant transmissions there and sees a weird cat. He has a memory in the back of his head but can't quite put the pieces from where. Beerus then did his paralysis thing on Vegeta and Vegeta remembered that exact time and location when and where it happened. The previous king Vegeta exits out this castle and immediately regrets going out and looking on what and or who created all the hassle and carnage. Beerus sees old Vegeta and goes to greet him and Vegeta is automatically backing the hell away from the destroyer. 
Vegeta says to stop the stuff and asks what the actual hell he's doing here. Beerus replies with what exactly he's looking for, which is the Super Saiyan God. He also says he can't find him anywhere. Vegeta then thinks about it, cause it's a damn year urgency, and remembers the Dragon Balls. Vegeta shouts to stop and pleads with him, saying he can get him the Super Saiyan God so he can fight him. Beerus complies and lets Vegeta do his thing. Vegeta tells him to come if he wants, he then goes to Earth with Beerus in tow. He then goes to Capsule Corp and asks Bulma for the Dragon Balls. He gets to the machine and summons Shenron. He then wishes for the Super Saiyan God to arrive at their location. But it's impossible, even though Shenron's power is increased due to the machine that makes it possible. But he does explain everything about the ritual and how it's actually possible. Vegeta takes every piece of information and listens on carefully. After Shenron disappears, Vegeta powers up to alert the rest of the Saiyans, and boy do they come. Vegeta then tells them the too long didn't read to them, and they agree to help. Vegeta is of course the strongest one, and they choose him. Having said that, five righteous Saiyans join hands and pour their energy into one Saiyan. At first nothing is happening, but then a light show appears as the Saiyans are embedded in white and yellow light. Seasons are changing left and right and whatnot. But at the very end, the red aura appears around Vegeta as he's finally became a Super Saiyan God himself and is fully alert and ready to take on Beerus. With that, the fight is taken to the air and is initiated. The fight starts just like with Goku in the original, with Vegeta adapting to his newfound powers as he never used a such a powerful form before. Beerus is folding his ass of course, but Vegeta starts getting the hang of it and rapidly increases in his strength catching Beerus off guard and landing quite a few punches on his body, giving him a bruise or two even. Everything is going according to plan until Beerus powers up, exerting more energy and attacking back. Vegeta is trying to keep his composure up and goes into defensive. Being slightly pummeled, he successfully takes the battle even higher up into space, where they continue the battle, this time about to go all out. Vegeta is getting angrier by the minute that a mere cat has humiliated both him and his father, so he wants him to suffer the same fate, using his full power and rushing Beerus. Beerus appears to have some trouble. After a nice little fight, that almost destroyed the universe of course, Vegeta returns to his normal state, but keeping the power. Beerus then realizes he has reached his peak, so he plans to end it all peacefully. Vegeta powers up the last attack and fires it. Beerus just takes it head on. He appears to have fainted and starts falling to the ground. Whis, who was stuffing his ass for the entire time, has noticed that Beerus is acting, so he plays along. Vegeta, completely worn out, just starts falling to the ground, having lost all his energy himself. Beerus and Whis pick up their asses and leave. With that, they might think the trouble is over, but Bulma gets mad at Vegeta for forgetting that it's her birthday. And with that, we'll leave me things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I shouldn't have Urza for my wife in Kakarot's backstory, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.